Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and in this video I'll be showing you how to replace a circuit breaker in a breaker panel. There's a few main reasons why you may need to replace your circuit breaker. Number one is if it failed mechanically, so if power is going into it but not coming out of it, even though the breaker is in the on position, that breaker is bad. Number two is if it fails to reset, so if it's in the off position and you go to put it on and it automatically just trips right away and there's nothing connected to that circuit, it just keeps going right back to the off position, that one failed as well. And number three is if there's physical damage on it. If there's a broken part, a piece of it chipped off, or perhaps there's a melted or burned area, in all those scenarios, that breaker needs to be replaced. In my case, what happened is suddenly there was no hot water. I wasn't too bothered about the cold showers, but my wife and son were not thrilled. And the way it's set up in my house is the breaker panel sends power to a timer that cycles the water heater on and off, and then that timer sends power to the water heater. So originally I thought, okay, something's wrong with my water heater. I took it apart, I checked it, and it turns out it wasn't getting any power. Then I checked the timer, took apart the timer, and found out that the timer is also not getting power. And then finally I made it to the breaker panel, and when I took it apart and tested it, it turned out that my breaker, the water heater breaker, even though it was in the on position, no power was coming out of it. I went to Lowe's and they did not have the breaker that I needed. Then I went to Home Depot and they too did not have the 30 amp breaker that I needed. So what I did is I actually bought a 25 amp breaker instead of a 30. And before you jump into the comments to say, Jay, what in the world were you thinking? Allow me to explain. I do have an electrician friend and I did consult with him before buying that. And he said it's fine to buy a 25 amp breaker instead of a 30. Motors and compressors in various appliances around your house have a thing called inrush current. When the motor just powers on, it draws a whole lot more amps than it regularly does. And when it's already running, then the amperage goes down. The perfect analogy for this is pushing a car. When the car is stationary, it's really hard to start getting it rolling. But once the car is already rolling, then it doesn't take nearly as much strength to keep pushing it. Same with the motor. It's hard to start it, but once it's started and it's already running, then it takes a lot less amperage. And average breakers are built to compensate for that. They do not trip right away if the amperage goes over 30 amps. Like if it's rated for 30 amps, if it goes up to 40, it will not trip right away. In fact, here's a quick fact for you. Let's say we have a 20 amp breaker and there's 22 amps going through it. It might take it hours to trip. But of course, if there was 60 amps going through it, then it would trip in just a few seconds. Most 40 and 50 gallon water heaters like mine have 4,500 watt heating elements in them and those pull about 19 amps when it's running. So in my case, a 25 amp breaker will work just fine and won't give me any trouble. The main purpose of breakers is actually not to protect appliances, but more to protect the wires from burning and melting. But I'm not an electrician, so my experience with breaker panels is a little limited. So if you're an electrician watching this and you can explain that better, please do so in the comments below. Anyway, that's it for the little intro speech. Let's proceed to the replacement. Now, of course, before you do anything, the first thing you wanna do is turn off the power. In my case, I actually don't have a main breaker. My main breaker is outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and go turn it off outside. But in your case, it's probably gonna be inside, a big breaker up on top. You wanna to turn that off first before proceeding. Now, my panel is on the main floor, but yours may be in the basement. If yours is in the basement, keep in mind that when you turn the main breaker off, all the lights are gonna go off. So make sure that you have a flashlight handy. And while we're on this topic, just a fair warning, this video is for educational purposes only, and if you don't feel comfortable doing this, then please do not attempt to do anything you see in this video. And just one more thing that you might wanna do before turning that main breaker off is to turn off all your electronics, shut down your computers, your laptops, your TV, unplug it perhaps. If there's anything that might get damaged from a power outage, then you might wanna turn those things off before you flip that main breaker. In fact, many electricians recommend turning off all your breakers one by one before you turn the main breaker off. And then when you're turning it back on, do the reverse. So first you would turn it on and then you would turn all the small breakers on one by one. I won't turn off the power to my panel quite yet because I wanna take the cover off and then measure the voltage to show you how I was troubleshooting that breaker. Most panel covers come off really easy. All you need to do is take out the screws all around the perimeter. What I like to do is to leave the top screw in and as you're taking the last screw out, just press on the panel cover and take that last screw out. 
And some of these panel covers can be pretty heavy. So make sure you commit to it. You do not want to let this slide or drop because even if you turn the main breaker off, there's still live power up on top. So you want to make sure that you don't accidentally touch anything with the panel cover. So grab it firmly and just pull it right out. By the way, one thing I forgot to mention is that it's a good idea to mark which breaker you're going to be replacing, especially if it's not in the off position, like if they were all on. Once you take the panel cover off, they all kind of look the same, so you get confused which one you're actually replacing. So it helps to mark with a piece of tape or a marker which breaker you're going to be replacing before you pull that cover off. I'm going to be replacing this bad boy right here, and I wanted to show you how I tested it. So it was in the on position. Remember, I'm still live right now, so this whole thing is live. But most of your panels, they're going to have a main breaker right up on top. When you turn that off, you're still going to have power on top of that breaker, the two big lines coming into it, but you're not going to have any power down here. So this is my water heater breaker. It's a 30 amp breaker. I'm going to switch my meter to voltage. And electricians recommend using one hand, if possible, to check voltages. That can be a little bit uncomfortable, so what I like to do is use my meter as my other hand. I just plug one lead into the meter. So I have it set to voltage, and I'm going to check from the two terminals going into this breaker. This is supposed to be 240 volts. And I'm getting zero coming out of it, even though the breaker is on. And this breaker, for example, this two-pole breaker, is from my dryer, which is also 240 volts. If I check this one, look at that. I do have 242 volts. So 240 here, but zero here even though they're both on. So at this point, you would turn the power off and proceed with the replacement. First thing I like to do when I'm replacing a breaker is to just keep it in the off position. Same with the new one that I'm putting in. I just put it in in the off position and then turn it on later. And then loosen the two screws holding the wires. Pull out the wires and move them off to the side. Just enough so you could get that breaker out. To remove the breaker, pull the lever, the switch, towards the side where the screws are on. And it should come out fairly easy. It just swivels to the side and you can pull it right out. It's held in there by these little hooks on the bottom of the breaker, which hook onto this metal plate in the breaker panel. If you have the opportunity, the best way to get the correct breaker is to literally take out the bad one and take it with you to the store. And if possible, make sure the brand lines up. So this is a GE, and I bought a GE replacement. If you're buying a different brand, there's a good chance it won't fit. For example, this 30 amp breaker, this is a 30, and this is a 30. This is a HOM brand, and this is the GE. So even though they look very similar in size, and they even have this little hook, this will not fit into that breaker panel. I actually even tried it just to make sure, and it does not fit. So see how the hook on the GE one is really small? On the HOM breaker, it's a little bit bigger and it does not fit. You cannot fully insert this breaker. So optimally, you want to replace it with the same amperage and the same brand and make sure it actually looks exactly the same as the one that you're replacing. There's two main kind of screw terminals on these breakers. One of them have these plates and the other ones have this clamp down feature. So the clamp down ones are really easy. You just put the wire in the hole and as you're screwing the screw in, it clamps down on the wire. Whereas these plate ones, you just have to make sure that you're not putting it under the screw, but you're actually putting it in between the plates, the wire, and then you screw it down. Here's our new breaker and usually it comes with the screws fully tightened down. So we want to loosen those up before we put it in. And you're going to put the new breaker in the same way you took the old one out. So you put it in diagonally. And you put those hooks into that metal rod or the metal plate. And then simply push this side in. If you got the correct breaker, this should go in fairly easily. If you're really struggling to push it in, then you might have gotten the wrong size breaker or the wrong style. You might have to go get a different one. And lastly, just put the wires in 
to the new breaker. And as you're tightening the screws, just hold the wire in place so it doesn't get pushed out as you're tightening it. And with breakers, you do want to tighten the screw down really nice and snug. Loose connections can cause that little terminal to overheat and that will start to slowly melt and burn the plastic on the breaker. Okay, so the new breaker is successfully installed. All we have to do is turn the power back on and make sure that power is going through this one. Let's just check to make sure that we have 240 volts coming into the panel. That would be these two big wires right here, the two black ones. I can just check the power straight at the lugs. And I do have 240 volts coming in. And the moment of truth. Nice. We got 240 volts. My wife is going to be thrilled. In about 15 minutes, we will have hot water again. Put the panel back on the same way you took it off, nice and slow and carefully. Line it up with all the breakers. There you go. I like to close the door and just hold it firmly against the wall while I put at least two screws in first before I let it go. And that is how you replace a breaker. I'll see you in the comment section. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, I got some bonus footage for you. So I took that bad breaker apart to see what was wrong with it. I split it up and I just wanted to show you this. Only one of these breakers is actually bad. And I know that some electricians, the way they test if there's weak breakers or broken breakers is what they do is they simply go to the breaker panel and they start tapping every single breaker with their finger to see if any of them are bad. And see how I'm tapping this one? I'm going to tap the next one with the same force. And it just goes right off. It's like really wimpy. This one comes on and off with a spring with a nice sound click. Whereas this one is just floppy. So actually this breaker is good. This side of the breaker was good. This one was bad. So I didn't do this in the video, but technically if I checked power from here to ground, from this screw to ground, I would have had 120 volts. But this leg was broken, so when I checked both of these, I had zero. And because curious minds need to know, let's just see if we can actually see the damage inside. Okay, so from what I can tell, a piece of this plastic that held this little lever in place, the switching mechanism that goes back and forth, see how that bottom piece broke off? That was the broken part. So here we have the good side of the breaker, and here's the bad side, and you can just see the difference. This one is burnt, whereas this one is totally fine. If I take this little arm out, yeah, see how this little bracket right here is in place? Whereas this one is broken off. So that was our issue. I found this kind of interesting, so I thought I'd share it with you. I started telling everybody about the benefits of eating dried grapes. It's about raising awareness.